She's very determined. Nothing will stand in her way. Nothing. That's not to say she doesn't feel the pain. No. The psychological pain. I'm Beth Potter and I am the world champion in triathlon, shall I say that? Beth was a very easy child. Slept, fed, yep. no problem. No trouble at all. I grew up in Glasgow. My parents, you know, took me to swimming, running. She was an easy teenager because she wasn't into all the partying and so in fact the biggest punishment she could get was to say, well you're not going to training. If you don't do that, you're not going to training. <laughs> that was that, <laughs> that was the worst That was the uh, equivalent of being grounded. <laughs> oh, so as it doesn't matter whether she wins or loses, it matters so much to her. Rio, Rio was awful. Was One of my uh, ever-lasting memories is standing at the back of the stands with them floods of tears. I've had my fair share of awful experiences in races. It's hard to deal with, it's hard to pick yourself up after a bad race and I, I don't want that feeling again. She finished the race but very, you know, she was very disappointed. And... We could tell there was something not right. At the games picked up a vomiting and diarrhoea bug and then didn't actually perform my best at the, at the champs. On the day, if I had been 100% healthy, I think it could have been different, but I still felt like I never was going to be good enough to win a medal. And that's what I'm looking for in sport. I want an Olympic medal, and I felt like it was unachievable for me. When did you do all this? That's world champs. Yeah, yeah, that was a famous one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh... I didn't realise they had so much, to be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been some journey. Some journey. So far. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbit in the headlights. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she, she loves winning, don't they all? Birmingham Commonwealth Games when I won a bronze medal. This is after I broke the 5k world record, 14.41. I love winning. The first race I won was the first race I did in running. So I actually didn't get into running until I was maybe 13 years old. Um, I did a lot of swimming and was entered in a race at school. And Beth kind of smashed the course record by about two minutes <laughs> out of nowhere. And uh, there's somebody come up to us saying, God, you should get her into a running club. But that was the first time we realised that she could run a bit. And then that's where the kind of uh, spark uh, for running happens. I'll always be at the track on a Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just love training. Yep. I absolutely love training. It's my favourite thing to do in the whole world. I like to hurt myself in training. I like to see how far I can push myself. I enjoy that sort of sadistic pain. Right down to 223 on that, eh? Yeah, yeah, I was negative split that last one. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, well. Tomorrow we have a uh, swim open water at the lake. So some sort of longer reps with short recovery. And then 
uh, long ride. Swim this late in the lake. We've been quite lucky this year. Quite warm. But I think it was really hard after Rio. I felt a bit lost afterwards. I didn't really know what to do. I just wasn't satisfied. I felt like I just needed a different goal and a change. Um, and I just needed to try something different and find the love for sport again. Because I've come from a swim background and I can run well, I think there was always a temptation to give Trass on a go. I think it was the fact that she hadn't done well in Rio and... The Brownlees. The Brownlees. And I met them in a McDonald's in Copacabana. I spoke to them for half an hour, an hour, about the opportunity of coming to Leeds to, to do triathlon. That was a good goal last good. night, Johnny, wasn't it? Which one? One that England scored. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, in Scotland, yeah, Scotland's goal. <laughs> I'd never even tried riding a bike. It seemed mental to quit my job and move to Leeds to give Trass on a go. I was 25 when I moved to Leeds. I didn't have time. Yeah, I didn't have time to, to you know, try other places. I needed to come to the best place and give it one shot. So I actually moved in with Johnny Brownlee and yeah, joined in with the Olympic squad here in Leeds. I wasn't that happy when I first moved here. I was in a, like a bit of a dark place for a while and I spent most days wondering whether I'd actually made the right choice. I left running, which was a safety net. Like I was good at that. I just wasn't going to be good enough. I, and I moved to a completely new city. I didn't know anyone. I was throwing myself into uh, an Olympic environment, which can be quite difficult. I was training with boys that were beating me and because I would get lapped in the pool, I would get dropped on the bike. I felt like I wasn't good at anything. It was really hard. It was a massive challenge. It was a very bold move, but, you know, looking back, I think it's the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> What's it like training with Bella? Uh, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, uh, she's not someone that chills very much in training, so um, it pushes herself and everybody else to their limits, and that's very good, I think. She came around, I think, down the back the other day, so that was good. <laughs> um, yeah, she's lovely. She's the most competitive person I know. Huh? You're good on camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. natural. Charlie, everyone. You coming for a walk? Where is your harness? Good boy. We are in Leeds, just outside the city centre. It's a Tuesday morning. It's horrible today, really grim. Weather is awful. I think it makes you really tough getting through winters that are, you know, similar to how today is. Um, I think that just gives you an added edge on race day. There were people who doubted me because I was a bit older than most people. I was 25 years old. I had come from a running background. I hadn't been swimming for years. I'd never ridden a bike. You could look at that and be thinking, yeah, I don't believe that this girl can do it. Obviously cycling is, uh, or cycling was uh, very new to me. I'd never ridden Clipton. I had never done any sort of cycling training, um, no chain gang, no group riding. I've had to be really patient with the progress. In the back of my head, I always gave myself five years. I felt like I needed to give it, you know, a set amount of time just to try and get better and just to try and see if I could win something. At 31 years of age, it's her first World Championship Series event. I felt like I'd waited so long to kind of, you know, win a race or win on the big stage. And then this season, it just, it all just clicked and it's just happened. And Potter is going to take gold in Montreal. Yeah, I feel like it was, you know, three buses just came along. 
Abu Dhabi, Montreal, and the Paris Test event. Basically the exact same course as the Olympics. It was a complete dress rehearsal, yeah. We were here for Paris and at home watching it on the television and that was that was fantastic. We were jumping all, we were jumping around this very room, uh, kind of punching the air as she kind of uh, it looked as if it was in the bag. Yeah, finally, I, I feel like the the hours of training, you know, here in Leeds, have finally paid off. World triathlon have put a post up. But comment: Who do you think will be the world champion? Of the seven comments. So far, all my name. We'll see. We're competing in the grand final in Ponte Vedra. If I finish on the podium there, I will automatically seal my Olympic qualification. So here's how we currently stand. Just 32 points separate series leader Bogran from the Scott Beth Potter. If either wins today, they'll be world champion for the very first time. Going into the race, I was yeah quite nervous, probably not as nervous as I had been at other races in the season. So we are underway for this women's grand final. Is it going to be Potter? Is it going to be Bogrand? I didn't feel great on the swimming bike. I got really cold uh, in the water and it was only by the end of the bike uh, like, that I started to feel, feel good. So I think I finally got some wor warmth back into me. My teammate from uh, GB was leading us out on the run. Um, and she did a really good job and you know, set the pace early on. Potter exactly where she wants to be. I think that course is just a combination of, you know, everything I've worked for. From being a teenager and running cross country up to spending hours in the pool and on the bike in Leeds. It all just came together. So Beth Potter now out front, and I think we could probably call her world champion elect. As soon as I kind of got on there and had a bit of a gap, I you know, yeah, I thought I thought it was mine to lose. Once it looked as if it was done, it was it was amazing. It was really really emotional and uh, a bit unreal, in fact. A look back. There's no one there. Potter wins for Britain. When I crossed the line, I was actually quite emotional. But I think the main overriding uh, feeling was just relief. Finally done it. I finally, you know, achieved what I I really deep down thought I could achieve. And what, what is that achievement? Being the best in the world. You just come staring back. Awesome. There. <laughs> it's been a really tough eight years trying to kind of find my feet in a new sport. Getting another opportunity to compete in Olympic Games would mean so much to me. I'm going to make sure I enjoy every second of it.